this this next team is also going to blow your mind. This is Josephine and Jeremy with Reactor. Hi, everybody. I'm Josephine Dorado. I'm the president of Fulbright's New York chapter and a professor in media studies at the New School. I'm Jeremy. Oh. I'm Jeremy Fesno, and I have a broken mic. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Clicker. <laughs> Okay, um, technical issues. Um, we're gonna go ahead and keep going. <laughs> we're here to talk about Reactor today, and hopefully Jeremy's mic will be fixed in a second, um, and other online activist initiatives. There have been some really great online activism initiatives, in particular ja the Japanese Earthquake Relief Fund, which was greatly aided by Farmville. So what Zynga did, which is the maker of Farmville, is they created a special plant that you could plant in your farm in Farmville, and in five days, the players played the game and made one and a half million dollars, which is kind of an amazing resource. All of these initiatives were all possible in this time frame and scale because of the internet. The idea is to use the internet's power to make the world suck less. All right, here we go. The, issue, the problem with these online activism efforts is that they're very fragmented. People are doing a variety of activities across a number of different platforms. In the case of the Philippines Relief, it wasn't clear which sort of hashtag you could use. You could see five over there on that green banner. This often results in a flurry of activity across different loci, foci, and uh, different stakeholders. And someone who wants to get involved really doesn't know which place to start. The bottom line is that there is currently no overarching service or structure that represents the future of online activism. So what we're proposing is that Reactor will close this gap. It will be a mobile game that encourages activism around the news stories that you care about. So you can see what's going on around you and what you can do about it. And over here in this map visualization, it's a mock-up. The red pins represent the news items around you. The green pins represent the actions you can take on those news items. But let's dial it back to a case study that we did, again, with the Japanese earthquake. So on the left-hand side, you see the news item, the Japanese nuclear crisis grows, more dire. And on the right-hand side, you see the Convoy of Hope Disaster Relief Fund is an action item. Another action item is Japan Society Relief Fund. Help them out. Basically, it's linking news to actions, but the critical element is that it's in a game framework. So you can challenge your friends, compete against them, and challenge them to act against the news. I get 100 points, I challenge you to act on the news with me. So when you combine the news with the inspiration to act on the news inside a game framework, you get a new way of dealing with news and activism, which is Reactor. We've seen a sharp uptick in the consumption of both mobile news and mobile gaming over the past few years. This primes now as the time to launch Reactor. On the mobile news front, not only do people have more devices, but the news platforms have shifted to fit them. Mark Zuckerberg even likens the current Facebook news feed as a personal newspaper. And when we put it all together, we see that people are consuming more news than ever before. On the gaming front, games are the most popular type of app overall in any app store and actually totaled half of all the app downloads in September 2013. The, the bottom line of this is that gaming is king in the mobile ecosystem. So let's talk about laying the foundation and framework for this. Taking it back to 2008, I and my colleagues got a MacArthur Foundation Award to create Fractor, which was a website with a matching engine that actually matched the news to actions. So, sound familiar? It is actually the framework for this, and the idea for turning into a mobile game came out of that. But then wasn't the time. We didn't have the infrastructure. There wasn't a lot of critical mass around mobile games. But now, you have half of the US population that owns a smartphone, one in five globally, and more people are using their tablets. But get this, the most read item in the New York Times last year was not an article. It was a dialect quiz. And it became that popular in three days. So why would news outlets be interested in this? Well, they're looking for ways to engage people around their news content. New York Times spent about $70 million in advertising last year, and the BBC spent 68.7 million pounds in advertising. So how much will it cost to make Reactor? About 50,000, but guess what? The New York Times, just three months ago, created a gaming department. That's how much they want to create game form formats from their content. So what it's doing is it's amplifying the news and activism outreach while it becomes augmented activism. All of this would be just a pie in the sky idea if we didn't have the crack team behind us that we do. Not only do we have people involved in various news outlets, including the New York Times, Global News Network, Al Jazeera, and the BBC, but we've also maintained expertise in technology, social innovation, and gaming. 
As an added bonus, four of our members are Fulbright alums. <laughs> so Reactor, making games and mobile work together in a mashup. Thank you for your time. Thanks for that. I'm just curious if you have any process built into this system that vets the legitimacy and efficiency of the actions that people can take. Yeah, so that's actually like something that we've um, really <laughs> been thinking through a lot, is the way that um, people can verify so that in a way that you can't game the game. You know, people will try to game um, when they play it anyway, but there are um, actions that we will have nonprofits and NGOs take to verify when people have done the action. So you can say that you've done it and somebody can um, verify that they've done it. We'll also have um, content where if NGOs want to create their own acts, um, they can um, create the act and assign points to it, um, but the database will be aggregating from different um, nonprofit you know, databases and things like that too. We focused on the news aspect in this presentation, but a whole other side is working yeah. with the activism nonprofit yeah. groups. Great presentation, very Thank interesting, you. innovative project. I'm curious, $50,000 is not a lot, and you obviously already have a running start with quite a few impressive people on your team. What would you say is the biggest challenge to bringing that to market and ultimately having that adopted as something that the world might be interested in? Yeah, I think that that figure of 50,000 is based on the fact um, of the framework for like this, the mobile app, the basic mobile app itself. The foundation that I talked about earlier with, that was built with the MacArthur Foundation was that the matching engine has already been built. So um, that part, I, I feel like that was the hard part that um, we now have a, a, a product, an open source product around. So we can build on top of that. Um, I think that the challenge behind it will be gaining critical mass, but I think that will definitely be helped by the news outlets being interested. And just the fact that the New York Times now has a game department, I feel like is very telling of where news industry is going in general. Like I think that they're going to be like a really you know big partner with us. That said, there is the coordination of a number of different efforts going on. You see we have news, activism, and gaming. Those are three traditionally very separate and diverse areas. Our goal is to bring them together, and that's going to take some growing pains. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh,